and I'm back at it again with another reaction. So today we have visiting the most drug addicted city in America. So make sure you punch that subscribe button, punch the like button, comment. You feel what I'm saying? Please help the algorithm. We're only at 78 subscribers. That means 99.99% 99 .99 of you guys are not subscribed. So what are you doing? Punch the subscribe button because I do monthly giveaways to all my new YouTube subscribers. I do giveaways, consoles, all types of stuff. So you don't don't want to miss it all right so we have another w video by tommy g so let's get right into it what is your first hit of math feel like superman now we are seeing students as young as first grade who have had drug issues what percent of guys that are slaying you think laced their I just assume everybody, I just assume everybody. wait say university of what University of Nebraska. Oh. Online, it says that Omaha is the most drug addicted city in America. Omaha. Does that surprise you? No. The United States of America is facing a massive drug crisis. In 2021, over 106,000 people died from drug overdoses. This is up 14% from 2020. The main culprit in this story is fentanyl. Next to the fentanyl, fentanyl crisis yeah. wreaking havoc in communities across the country, overdoses, drug seizures, and concerns continue to grow. RP juice were lone leaf juice were from coast to coast. The victim can be seen buying the fentanyl, then walking over to the front door of the gas station before collapsing. A snapshot of America's fentanyl. Yo, this crisis. is crazy. Imagine being so high that you're just bent over, ass up in the sky like this, face to the fucking ground. Like, and they're stuck like this. They can't move, bro. Like, if you try to move them, it's gonna be like this. An average of one person every 10 hours dies in this city of a fentanyl overdose. A lot more people are dying and it's in a lot of the- What? Look at all these people. Drug supply and people are- Yo. Doing it with Yo, see how like majority of these people are white? Without knowing they're doing it. Fentanyl was created in 1959 by Dr. Paul Janssen to be a more efficient alternative to morphine and it's used in hospitals to help with surgeries and pain management. Due to its potency and how cheap it is to produce, drug dealers cut their products with fentanyl to stretch it and make it stronger. The journey of fentanyl to the United- So it's like cotton, right? Cause cotton is, is expensive. Then you put that polyester on that bitch and make it shh. Like make it expand a little bit more. See the polyester, that synthetic fabric is big. Like it's it's is 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 fabric that's made in a lab. So you put the you put the synthetic fabric with the cotton, make it stretch a little bit. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, like Nike and um all these popular brands, they do it. It'll be like it'll be like 85% um polyester and like 60. United States is as follows. Much of it is created in China and India, and it's sold to Mexican criminal organizations like the Sinaloa cartel. It's then smuggled across the border, and it's been flooding the American streets. Today, we visit the most drug addicted city in America, Omaha, Nebraska. Whoa, top of the wait, streets. let's see the top. Today, of the top. okay, so we have Indianapolis, we have OKC, we got Tesla, which is Colorado Springs, Las Vegas. Mesa, Phoenix, Arizona, Minneapolis, Indianapolis. I thought, I thought like LA would be up there. We visit the most drug addicted city in America, Omaha, Nebraska. Top in the nation for meth, cocaine, marijuana, and heroin. We speak with addicts, people in recovery, drug dealers, and law enforcement. Let's hit the streets. First, we stop at University of Nebraska Omaha to speak with Coalition RX, a nonprofit dedicated to reducing drug use. Ladies and gentlemen, Carrie. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. We're seeing big pharma on the streets and we're seeing a lot of drugs, mainly fentanyl. And the bad thing about fentanyl is just little grams to kill you. If you look at a drug yeah. dealer like a business operation, what's in it for them to waste things with fentanyl? It's cheap, 
and it yeah. gives you a good kick of high. It's one of the most dangerous drugs we've What's ever seen. Thing? How is fentanyl getting into this country? Does anyone know the source, where it comes from, how it gets here? The drugs are being manufactured in China, and they're being sold to the groups like Sinaloa in Mexico, and then trafficking it across the border. Federal agents but how did three hundred thousand fed? How do they get the drugs shipped from China to Mexico without it being like getting caught? Look, look, five million dollars in fentanyl found stuffed inside gas tank of SUV in the Bronx. Where I'm at, chat in the Bronx. Fentanyl pills and 11 pounds of fentanyl powder. Authorities say the SUV has crossed wow. the U.S.-Mexico border multiple times. Now we are seeing students as young as first grade no. who have had drug issues. Oh, big pharma, in my mean? mind, they are the people that needed to be held accountable. They've been getting off scot-free, if you ask me. My son passed away when he was 18 from an accidental oxycodone overdose right here on this campus, actually. He had just finished his freshman year on a full academic scholarship here, and from what I can tell, he was experimenting with drugs, I yeah. believe, because of some stress he was under with grades and different things. And yeah. he went to sleep one night after getting some oxycodone from another student and he didn't wake up that morning. If we meet a, a drug dealer today that bolsters his business with fentanyl, what would be your message to that drug dealer? What would you like to say to him? Well, I want them to think about their own child or their niece or nephew or the kid next door. Would, would they want that kid's life to end because of what they're doing to make a buck? They're killing people's kids. Addiction is giving... Honestly... They don't give a fuck. These niggas are soulless creatures. They're soulless humans. They will literally sell drugs to their mothers, bro. They don't care. Real life, bro. Niggas will do anything for money, bro. Anything to get rich. Anything. No morals at all, bro. Giving up everything for one thing. But recovery is giving up one thing for everything. How many people in this room has either had a family member or know of someone that has overdosed in their circle? <laughs> Yeah. Since there's fentanyl in a lot of things, you it can carry work. naloxone. So what you do is you put it into your nasal cavity. I don't have the test. I and put then this up their nose. You put this part, and that then part. you just push down, and it will spray. Corporal Crane was equipped with the nasal spray Narcan, a prescription medicine that rapidly reverses the effects of an overdose. Thanks, you guys. Take care. Next, we had to speak to a former drug dealer that can give us insights on how narcotics are moving through this area. So we're heading to a trap house in Omaha, talk to a dealer, get inside their head. Tell me about the drug scene in Omaha. It's pretty active right now. I mean, when you hit us up saying that there's an epidemic level, I honestly thought to myself, I was like, well, shit, the drugs have always been in the game. One of the big things right now is meth, blood overdoses. Does that make you nervous being in the game? This made me a little nervous, not gonna lie, because nobody really knows, understands what they're doing nowadays, you know what I mean? What do you view as the impact of fentanyl coming into the game? It's honestly a travesty because it just kills people. It's what percent of guys that are slaying you think lace their shit? I just assume everybody, because at the end of the day, when they get it, they themselves sometimes don't know if it's been stepped on a cut or anything, you know what I mean? Tell me about the, the journey of how drugs get to America, and how Omaha is a central point of that. That's yeah. another thing too, like... You have to understand, when you're a drug dealer, the drug dealer gets their drugs for somebody else. Just like how we seen earlier in the video, how Mexico get their drugs from China. So what China is doing, they talking to them like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Um, you want to give me 30000 we'll give you X, Y, and Z amount. You know what I'm saying? Nah, you know, we don't got 30000 we got twenty five, maybe, you know, maybe even twenty if you could work with me. Yeah, for sure, don't worry about it. They taken out half of the the organic or whatever um oxycodone or um uh Percocet they taken half of it out so they can save it for somebody else. Half of fentanyl in so they can save money. Cause at the end of the day, to get those drugs made is more expensive. Like a full Percocet is more expensive than half of a Percocet and mix it in with fentanyl. So it's just like the it's just like the um the analogy that I gave you with the cotton and mixing it with the polyester. 
cotton is expensive to create or you know put in a hoodies whatever but if you mix it with the polyester it stretches you know what i'm saying synthetic fabric is fake so. understand it. the only unfortunate part about this this shit kills you so. this is just because we're on i-80 interstate 80 everything gotta come and go through here at some point in time that's why like nebraska they call it the gauntlet because we make so many drug busts on the interstate have you ever felt bad for a customer at the end of the day People are grown, it's their own responsibility to, to handle this shit, you know what I'm saying? You gotta do the drugs, and I put the drugs to you, whatever it is you do. What made you decide to get into the game? They got I did it out of necessity, game. like out of survival. Cause I, did, I, I lost my job, a lot of different things were going on, I got in trouble with the law, and I was just trying to figure myself out. And what kind of things went down in this house that we're, we're at? This place, man, everything used to go down here. Literally everything. Meth, coke, crack, weed, everything. Like, I got out in 2019, so I went away before it ever even got raided. What was your childhood like? That's pretty regular. Yeah. Do your parents know what you've been up to? Do they know everything? No, but my mom, I love my mom, so she, she has an idea. Does it surprise you to hear that Omaha is the most drug addicted city in the country? It kind of does. Big Pharma, what role do you think they play in this whole game? I think they play a big role in it. Because a lot of the stuff that, that, that people are exposed to wasn't around before them. If you came face to face with a, a mother of someone that has died from drug overdose, what would you say to her? Sorry for your loss. I mean, the person makes their own choice at the end of the day. Nobody forced them to do that. I feel sorry for them. Is there like a code on the streets like most dealers won't deal to kids? Or do you know of any guys that'll sell to a fifth grader or a sixth grader? I think if anybody got the money, anybody will sell that. I'm going to be honest with you. If you could retire from this profession, what would you get into? I'd like to do what you're doing. Next, we head to a part of Omaha where drug addicts and homeless people are living in tents on the street to get their story and hear what their life is like. Omaha is known as the most drug addicted city in America. It is. I'm with the outreach program, I'm a psychologist. Fentanyl is the worst thing in the world. They used it when they put you under to do surgery. They quit using it when it disappeared off the docks. They went to Mexico, it comes back to the United States. They stomp on it, which stomping means they mix it with other things. Young cats like you get it. What can you tell us about life here? Difficult, hot, resources are slim. Do you survive out here all day? Yeah, I'm here 24 seven. What gets someone to a point that they're willing to be outside in a tent to 90 degree heat to get away? Sometimes it's better to be out here than it is to be in an abusive situation. And guess what? Mm. It could happen to you two guys too. What's the drug that's running through anybody? Omaha right now? Meth, crack, there's some cocaine and weed. Pretty much anything you want to find is pretty much you find it right here. I got out of the situation that I was in and ran out of fun. I never seen this. How are you overweight and you're homeless? Oh, she got a little stuff in the back, a little, little jug, of, jug of water. She got a dog back there laying with her. She got another dog in front of her. So obviously they're not really homeless, homeless. Like they said, they probably been in a tough situation where they had to leave. You know, they probably could get they could probably find some shelter soon so not really homeless homeless they're just homeless for the moment fun so i got stuck here until i can get enough funds up to be able to get into a place people aren't bad they've had a bad situation but sometimes the system doesn't allow them that what could the system change or what could be better about the system other psychologists psychiatrists outreach programs hospitals where they can take their medication etc etc they can live a normal life this is kind of the skid row of omaha i would say yeah, yeah, hell yeah this is the bottom i can't get my fucking id they fucking with me they keep talking about they care about the people that's homeless they don't want you to put your tents up nowhere why the fuck we can't put our tents up nowhere and y'all not trying to help us I had suspicions about this guy, so I called the Sienna Francis house to see if he worked there. They said he was not a psychiatrist on staff. He was a patient. Today we meet John, a former- I ain't gonna lie, he well spoken though. He fooled me, nigga. <laughs> former addict helping other people on the path to recovery outside the Sienna Francis house, which is a place leading the charge in helping the homeless, but also one of the highly concentrated areas of drug addicts in the city. It's a sketchy place that plays a central role in this story. The most drug addicted city in America is arguably Omaha, Nebraska. Does that surprise you to hear? That's the first time I've heard that. I know it's uh, bad here, the fentanyl epidemic, the opioid crisis. Exactly. I know it's known for uh, the methamphetamine use, but uh, yeah, it's getting worse and worse. So I've got a for-profit uh, counseling agency, Halo Counseling Center. I've been doing that for about the last eight years, started that 
that in 2015. So we do a lot of work with like the criminal justice system. Most of our referrals come from probations, drug courts, veterans courts, things like that. It's insane. I mean, our business just continues to grow. I started off with just me, myself and I, and now we're up to eight counselors, five offices, and we still can't keep up. What got you into this? You see what I'm saying? Also another thing too, why a lot of these places won't ever be fixed is because you have people like this where they're making thousands upon thousands upon thousands on making money. The hospitals, they're making shits of tons of money when people overdose when they come to the hospitals. Everybody's making money off people being, you know, addicted to drugs and homeless and stuff like that. So you just gotta keep that in mind, bro. It's almost impossible to get out of this situation, but it's not impossible, you feel what I'm saying? Almost. So I got my own history in 2006. Really I was out on the streets smoking meth. I was involved in a raid September 11, 2006 and was arrested, charged with a conspiracy to distribute 500 grams of meth. So I was just uh, with the guy that was doing it basically. I was his right hand man. So that's where it started for me, where my sobriety got started was uh, that treatment facility right there. Yeah. There used to be a lot of tents out here. If we end up walking down farther that way, you'll see a lot of tents and everything uh, where the people choose not to go into the shelter. You know, they're either not ready yet or it's just not for them. How'd you become sober? I got arrested, which is my sober date, August 26 of 2020, and arrested for methamphetamine. I went to jail for six months and you know, I've been battling drug addiction for probably the last 10 years. And so I was arrested, sat in jail for six months. I came over here. Uh, I was here for seven months and then went to the halfway house and then just been trying to get my life back together slowly but surely. It seems like jail is a lot of people sober day. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some sort of higher power, man, that uh, gave me the, the option to uh, do a program that we offer here. And uh, if I graduate that program, I get the felony removed from my records. Mm -hmm. Once I got into jail, it was almost a sense of relief because I had attempted. But this is this what I'm saying. People, yo, bro, drug addicts, they will go to jail for years, bro, five, 10 years, whatever, months, it doesn't matter. They'll come out and they'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna do good, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure I go to this facility. Sometimes they'd be like, nah, I don't need a facility. I just did it for six months, I'm good. I did it for five years, I'm good, I don't need, I don't need a facility. Later that night, they get access to a drug dealer, start doing it again. So it's like a, it's like a repeated cycle, bro. Some people, they actually need somebody to force them to these councils. And even if you force them to the council, sometimes they'll still break the rules and, and get kicked out. So it really is up to the person. It's up to the person to make that decision on, you know, if I'm gonna, you know, go and fix my life and get it together, or I'm just gonna do the same shit all over again. Sobriety, you know, some feeble attempts. Didn't really reach out to get any real help. Then when I was charged federally, then it just became a fear factor. Once you see the United States of America versus John Sapensky, that uh, tends to Jeez. tighten some things up in the old uh, the old body there. What is your first hit of meth feel like? Superman. Euphoria, energy. I was at work, I was mowing lawns, and I had a hangover from the night before. And my boss was like, dude, what? What's wrong? What's going on, man? Usually, you know, you're you're doing a good job at work. Man, I got a hangover. I feel like crap, you know, whatever. He's like, go talk to my brother. So I went and talked to the brother. He pulls out a bag of meth, took a big old snort, and I'm mowing lawns like nobody's business. <laughs> I'm running around with a weed eater and just tearing people's lawns apart. It was glorious. So it started out pretty innocent. Yeah. Within weeks, it's... I'm staying up for days That's on end. Uh, it's three o'clock in the morning. I got to work at six. I need to get more dope. Can't find any more dope. Can't go to work. And the cycle began. My first experience with it was uh, I was using marijuana at the time and my friend came over and I, I took a hit of meth and, and it really didn't do anything for me then. I don't know if it was because I was already prescribed amphetamines, legal amphetamines. And then years down the road, after I got into some trouble in a different city, I was on probation and I was kind of trying to be clean. And a girl said to me that I was seeing at the time, she said, well, this will make sex better. Of course, I'm all for it. You know, if it's going to make sex better, why not? That's tough. How'd you find your way here? What's your story? So I got in trouble like with the law. I was addicted to meth bro. for like 13 years. What was your first introduction into meth? How'd you start that? When I was 16 years old, I used to drink a lot with my friends and stuff. And uh, I got introduced to it one night. It was like something to just stay awake, to party more. And then it became like a, an everyday thing. I went to jail. How long did you serve? 
I was in there for three months. Did that help you on the road to sobriety? If I would have got out and just went back on the streets, I'd probably be back on drugs right now. What should the punishment be for a dealer that's selling people meth? Definitely jail time. What was the, the low point of your meth journey? Right before I came here, I lost custody of, me, custody of my girls. I lost the love of my life. I'm facing like 17 years in prison right now. If you're struggling with drug addiction, you gotta find your higher power. You gotta believe in something higher than you. And if you need help, it's always nice to, to reach out to somebody that you love and tell them the problems you're going through. Our next stop is talking to drug dealer Shakedown, who is currently facing federal time for her narcotics operation. We wanted to talk to someone that had hands-on experience with fentanyl. Here's what we learned. How do you describe yourself? Just try to get a dollar to take care of my people. So what are you currently up against right now? Facing about nine to ten years, manufacturing methamphetamine, fentanyl, cocaine. I've spent five years already in prison. You know what I mean? This wow. is federal time, so it's gonna be different. Do you think there's any shot of beating the case or what is your like what are you looking at? No, I don't think so. It's nothing that's gonna stop me from going to prison for some time. I ain't start, you know, really hustling like something narcotics and whatnot until three years ago, four years ago, before that I was in licks, like robbing people, going to people's cars, going to people's houses, you know, and doing what I could to just stay afloat. I was introduced to selling drugs and I was like, damn, I ain't got to beat nobody up no more, I ain't got to do all this, <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't got to do all this, put my life at risk, put your life at risk, you know what I mean? You put people through that, you put people's kids through that. Have you ever felt bad for a customer? Before I ever started selling fentanyl, I lost my uh, girlfriend, my girlfriend before this, I didn't give a f I was like, if I'm going to lose somebody, y'all going to lose somebody, I kind of like none good that the wild life. What are the drugs that are going through Omaha right now? Like, what are the biggest drugs that people are selling? Fentanyl, super heavy right now. They don't even want heroin anymore. Fentanyl is synthetic heroin. That's what they're going for. They want that shit immediately. What were your childhood like? I was in the system. I was locked up. Like, I've been locked up since I was 14. What were you booked for? Distributing and conspiring to confederate methamphetamine, fentanyl, and cocaine over 400, but less than 700 grams. How much money does all that cost? That'd be like 50000 And then what can you flip that into? You get 50000 straight up, but you ain't find people, you're going to flip that to 150000 easy. The first hit of fat now, what is that like? If you are constantly a person that had deals with trauma and traumatic situations, it's gone for a minute, you know what I mean? Do you think most drug users and even drug sellers are running away from trauma and drugs are kind of the way to like patch up the pain? Hell yeah. I feel like it's not. It's never the drugs. It's the, the experiences that you've been through that made you, you know, gravitate to that. Earlier this morning, we met with the mom of a kid who overdosed and it's just her son's death has impacted the whole family it has had a trickle effect what would you say to the parents of people that have overdosed i've been through it so it's like i don't you know i mean people make their own choices and you just gotta stop them from making those choices yeah. not by telling them what to do what's the youngest person you would say that has come to buy drugs from you 13 14. what does it cost for a serving of fat now if you buy it in the book i can get it for a dollar too far and what do you sell it for three dollars I wish you the best. Bro. I appreciate you. Tell me a little wow. about yours. That's a 10x profit, bro. That's thirty dollars, and you buy you getting them for one twenty five. What? Well, I was living out in Omaha, and the Park Thirty is where really huge, and that's how I started using. You know, I've heard that in rap songs. Yep. Park ten, I just popped up Park ten. Park Thirty, I just popped up Park Thirty. And it's so crazy because this type of music is what everybody's listening to, bro. Like. And that shit literally just influences you to pop perks and stuff like that. Like, stuff. Everyone talks about the perk 30s. They glamorize using the perk 30s, getting fucked up on the perk 30s. But honestly, laced with fentanyl, super addictive. Yeah. A lot of it is the chemical dependency in your body. It's not so much you wanting to get high anymore. It's your body physically needs it. My drug addiction really took everything from me. The number wow. one thing on my mind all the time was getting high and using. How long have you been clean for? Um, I've been clean for 70 days. What is your plan to make sure you don't fall back? Those withdrawals, man, when I went through withdrawals and treatment, it felt like I was on my deathbed, you know? Couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, I was throwing up, and that's a big reason why I feel like I can't go back is just because I know the hold that it'll have on my life. I was spending 500 bucks a week on my drug habit. What was rock bottom for you? I was staying in someone else's house, no money, selling my own things on Facebook, so that way I had money to get high and even then I was maybe using one time a day and I was still really sick. Addiction doesn't discriminate, you know? People think that it's only low-class people who get addicted to drugs, but honestly, anyone can get addicted to drugs. I was very fortunate growing up. I just, when I was finally on my own, I met a man who kind of veered my life in a different direction and I chose to take that path. I can't imagine what it's like doing your job in this area. What is it like? You get used to it. I mean, that's, that's 
what you signed up for, right? What would you do to help a city like this? I really don't have an answer for you. I guess you can either invest money into the incarceration side, or you can invest money into the rehabilitation side. So you gotta go for rehabilitation, right? Yeah. I mean, you wanna help people as best as you can. You don't wanna incarcerate them for life. What percent of the calls you would say you have to answer to are drug related? Probably more than that. We appreciate what you're doing and thank you. Yeah, you all take care, all right? All right, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoyed that video, hit that like button, hit the comment button, comment the craziest thing that ever happened to you. Are you dealing with drug addiction? Is your family dealing with drug addiction? If so, just pray, pray to God, and try to keep your eyes on them. I know everybody have their own lives, but at the end of the day, we all humans at the end of the day. We all make mistakes, and we all need help, all of us. So don't give up. Keep on trying, keep on working. You're going to figure it out, all right? I'll catch you in the next reaction. Peace.